Hey everyone, my name is Alexander Gladysh and today we'll tell you a bit about ad hoc data analytics with Lua and Lua JIT. Uh, I'm a CTO and co-owner and logic editor. We do Lua for five years now in the company and uh, more than five years and we, we do lots of stuff uh, including big data analytics with Lua. We do have our own framework to analyze big data, but uh, I will not tell you about it today. I will tell you about how to manage the big data if you have, uh, if you don't have anything basically except uh, processing power and, well, some time on your hands. Uh, so basically you have a data set to analyze which is too large for your common uh, tools like maybe in R language or Excel, whatever analysis package you use. And uh, for, for the purpose of this talk, this is the definition of big data. It, it is rather, can start rather small for us, the big data goes, and can, the size can be quite large actually. It's still approachable, uh, approachable with this uh, way to do. Uh, the analysis. So, and uh, I'm supposing that you don't have uh, a team to manage Hadoop, and you don't have, uh, well, money to pay for Google BigQuery, maybe yet, because you don't know if you have anything useful in, in the data. Uh, so, but you have some processing power. Well, uh, so our goal is to pre-process the data. So you can fit it into the uh, uh, regular tools and analyze it there. Oh, well, maybe your favorite analytics tool is Lua 2, but let's be on to this talk. And if your data is dynamic, then uh, we have to learn how to pre-process it. And uh, when we build a data processing pipeline, uh, which is to be on the, this talk. So our approach is uh, to use Lua, obviously, and uh, use a bunch of semi-standard tools from Linux, the classical tools. Uh, we go minimalistic while explore, exploring. We, uh, I think it is important in my experience to avoid frameworks at, at this point, because you don't know what you need. And it is very tempting when you use Lua to start building your very small ecosystem. Don't. At this point, you first at, at first feel around how it works, how the data is structured, what what are your needs, and only then <coughs> switch to that, switch to building the framework. And uh, when you are sure what you need, then move on to industrial sol solution that fits your newly understood requirements. Well, si since we're at Lua Workshop, roll your own ecosystem. Uh, some assumptions of, about the data that you have. Uh, it is plain text, or could be made plain text. Uh, it is column-based, uh, CSV-like data. I, I found that tab-separated data works quite well, unless your strings uh, contain tabs often. And optionally, you may have some freeform data in the end, maybe some JSON string or something. Typical example is web server log files. Well, it, that's what we analyze the most, actually, from data from web beacons and stuff. But uh, this approach will work actually for, for most of other data that can be represented in this way. So here's an, a single line from a uh, log. Well, interesting things are user ID and the URL, which is accessible on the domain. And, well, lots of other stuff which is not so interesting. And here is an example of uh, intermediate data. So you have calculated something. Here is a frequency table for the domains that occur in logs. Uh, it is, if the log is sorted obviously by time, uh, this uh, thing is uh, sorted by the first column, which is the key here. It's the domain name, domain name, and then the 
graded the number of hits, so let's say. Um, that's the date, and what, what are the hardware you have to use? Basically, the more is better, as usual. And the more data you have, well, the more hardware you have to have on your hands to, to be able to do it on time. But, uh, well, every little helps, actually. And, uh, well, even if you have a set of uh, several VMs on, somewhere in the cloud, or can afford a few, to, to buy a few of them, that, that, that's a help. And uh, your fancy gaming laptop actually is pretty good data cruncher. So we are running on Linux. This will work for other POSIX systems. But, uh, well, uh, as for the file system, uh, the most simple approach, s since we are exploring the data, uh, is just to have copies on all the nodes, on, on, on all the machines that you have uh, using an identical layout. So, but, well, if you have fast network, that's okay. Th this will work. You can use SSH, SSHFS or just stream the data out of the network. It's, that's not a problem. Um, so, here's an example of uh, the command that is used to process the data. It's uh, taken from the middle of data message and session. Uh, well, it's a, it's a shell command that is run by researcher directly to shell. Uh, first of all, we want to know how much time it will take uh, analyzing the data. And there's this little uh, tool called PyViewer, which uh, displays some very useful statistics about uh, how, the file, how fast the file is read and uh, how much time was spent on this and, and so on. So it's useful to have it at, at the start to, to see if your command which does something fa fast enough. And uh, as you see, the data is compressed. Uh, we are working with text data with which compresses quite well and uh, also it is quite large. So it makes sense to compress it. Uh, we will talk a little bit later about the compression algorithms that we can use. But, uh, so the first thing that we do is to uncompress it. And, uh, well, after this, we filter a couple of columns from the data. And then we launch uh, in parallel uh, several, uh, actually, 10 processes which uh, converts the data, and I will get back to the details uh, when I will finish this list. Uh, up the, the overview, then they sort the results, call another small screen, aggregates the results, so, sort them again, and then compress the result. This way, uh, call this, that, that's an example which works on a single machine. Uh, this parallel tool is uh, uh, very useful. It's basically uh, X arcs for uh, parallel processing. You just feed it the command, it, it handles uh, all the uh, parallelization stuff. It can uh, run your commands on remote machines as well, but for, for the sake of simplicity, this is a command that was run actually at, at, on quite a beefy machine if you will count the processes. There's, it uses a lot of cores. Well, uh, so, uh, what, you, what else you can see here is that there's quite a lot of Numbi Yumba here that uh, this the, we disable the local, local, and we, for example, we set the delimiter explicitly. That's a performance trick, actually. So it works much faster than this. Um, <coughs> so each command after the pipe uh, 
it launches uh, a separate process, as you know. <coughs> and uh, you have to use commands that uh, uh, support parallelization, further parallelization. So here's uh, pigs with uh, zip uh, compressor, decompressor. It, it supports uh, uh, argument that tells it to decompress, in this case, in four threads, in four processes. And uh, the goal here is to con consume all cores on your machine uh, and to consume all memory without, of course, running out of it. Uh, so, let me show the parallel. Uh, the sort has the same argument, of course, and you can tell the sort how much memory to use. Here is the very, very simple was script converts the URL to the domain name. Everyone can write this in function so it's it's very simple. You just read the input and uh, well you write output so it's, it's trivial. Parallel splits the input that it writes that it reads from the pipe and two blocks of 16 megabytes and feeds it to the, to the screen. Here we assume that we don't call, don't really care to if you if you lose a few lines of input to to bad data. That's usually the case if you have billions of them. It doesn't matter. Uh, there are approaches to. Uh, for most strict splitting of the input, but well, we don't use them here because for the speed. Uh, and there is a, another script which aggregates the output. But what we do here is we calculate the number of hits per domain, actually. Um, and this script takes list formatted like a key value list and it, it is sorted by value. As, as we see, we can uh, tell sort using the this argument to sort on the second column. Um, and then it transforms this value out. So the implementation again is quite trivial. We just read the input, and we, since the data is sorted, it, it, it is important to keep the data sorted. Uh, to uh, so you don't have to uh, store too much context, because uh, even if you add a little bit of context uh, per line, when you have billions of lines, you run out of memory, and if you use logic, you have only one gigabyte basically on 64-bit system, unless you use uh, FFI. And, uh, well, uh, so implementation, again, is trivial. You just count this similar case and then reset the, reset the counter and output the value. If you, uh, the K changes. So basically, we work with sorted data. We use MapReduce to handle it line by line. Uh, we work in parallel where at all possible. And while trying to use as much as uh, resources we have as possible, but we have to avoid running out of memory. And that's a trap because you have to watch uh, how your script behaves, behaves in, in runtime. You can not run out of memory on a smaller data, data set, and, but you waste a few hours and then bam, on a larger data, data set, you don't have any more resources. <coughs> so what, what tools do we use? I mentioned a, a few of them already. The parallel, uh, the sort, the unique to filter out, unique, unique lines sorted out, the grep to filter the lines, uh, the cut <coughs> to uh, filter out the columns from the data, uh, join to merge back 
the sorted, uh, two sorted data sets. COM is uh, fast diff tool, basically. Pipe viewer for diagnostics, uh, compression utilities, and knowledge. Well, logit. We, we've seen that it's a simple Lua code that we use. But still, logit 2.1 quite helps with, with the speed. Uh, 2.0 does not contain that many string optimizations, but 2.1 is quite good. And uh, I found that the logit is uh, at least at, as fast as grep when you use it. Uh, especially for more advanced cases. Uh, well, FFI, you know, it's difficult to code with FFI. And it prevents you from iterating rapidly on your analysis. So, no FFI at this stage. Go plain Lua, and, well, if you really need it, roll your own like a system, maybe reuse some code maybe later some existing code from someone else. So uh, I've told you about well, uh, as for as for the compression. Oh. Well, zip is slow. Don't use zip. If you have to use zip compression, use pigs, uh, which is parallel lines about zip. And there uh, are a few other alternatives. Uh, look at LZ4. Uh, it is quite fast, but it creates larger files. Well, there is XZ, 7Z, Z, BZ, which are good compression but slow. Uh, basically, it's uh, uh, you have a trade-off between, as usual, between comp compression speed, the compression speed, and the data size, and actually the memory that is required for compression and decompression. And uh, depending on what uh, your usage pa pattern is, uh, you pick the tool to store the data. If uh, you have to, uh, you can't afford to spend much time on compression, then you have to use something like LZ4. And well, basically, for me, PIGS is the good, the best trade-off for the most of, of the cases. It, it is <coughs> quite fast and it, it is a standard format which, is, which can be used uh, without pigs by, but by using standard tools. <sighs> no sort is a bit tricky. Uh, as I said, you have to disable the vacuum, uh, to for it to be faster this uh, noticeable uh, improvement. Also, you have to specify the delimiter so it will match for a single character, not with an expression. Um, also, you have to watch for your memory, because uh, parallel in conjunction with the memory size argument, uh, it con consumes logarithm the formula of, of the memory, so here I would run out of memory, actually, it's, it's a bad uh, command line. And, well, I, I spent quite some time, some time to understand how to configure the sorting order and sorting parameters of arguments uh, on, on columns. Uh, it, it appeared that you have to put the flex at the very end of the key. Well, as for grep, this question of, on stack overflow has very interesting details how to optimize it. The most basic is, again, disable the locale and use uh, fixed arguments, don't use re regular expressions. So, some notes. Well. You've seen that the scripts I use are really simple. If you are on an old hand, you can code in ask or Perl. Well, it's a, a few characters. 
but well, it's not maintainable. Uh, if you are really comfortable with those tools, go ahead and use it. Lua is, works quite well here, it, and it is fast, it is readable, but use what you used. Uh, for otherwise, if you're from the new generation, and if you're not comfortable with AFC, Lua is your tool, in my opinion. Um, well, do start small, because uh, the computation takes time, obviously, and uh, it is important that you always, always run your scripts on small excerpts from your data, data first. Uh, it is a separate topic how to prepare these excerpts so the, the results will be uh, uh, mathematically correct. So to say, so you have the statistics, same statistics. Uh, but uh, if you're debugging, that doesn't matter. Just take the first uh, thousand lines from your log, basically, 10,000 lines. You have a very quick turnaround speed. So prepare data set with small uh, amount of data, small enough, and then when you're ready, move to the larger data sets. But ledger that even if you debugged, ledger data sec sets blow on your face sometimes. So monitor resource usage and uh, watch how your scripts behave. And split your scripts to smaller parts so you know how how they behave better. And well, sometimes you have to rewrite everything from scratch because you just don't fit in the memory you have. Well, that's, uh, I'm, to be honest, not a very dis disciplined man myself, but when I'm doing this kind of analytics, I have to keep a journal, because we have quite many moving parts here, uh, and uh, since we don't have a framework, it's a little bit explicit, uh, the scripts that we, say, that we write, they're uh, a little bit hard to read. And you have to keep track of what you do and uh, what results are. Obviously, store actual versions of your scripts somewhere. And so you will be able to track what changed. I'm mentioning this at programmers' conference because this, that's, that's a command. That's, at least to me, that's not a script per se. It's a one in Russian location. So. I, have to, I had to have a intentional, how do you say this, effort to save them, to track them. It's, it looks, well, bash history stores that. No. Uh, well, and of course, don't forget to send it to ch check the results that you get. This, scripts had, this script has a bug. You can't use the unique key here. Each domain, domain will appear only once in the list. So, well, that's actually it. Questions? So, you seem to be running the shelves on my nodes. Uh, sure. Uh, do you have any recommendations on how to perform the final? Well, that's, that's a problem but because you have to collect the data. But uh, if you have fast network, you just mount the nodes to, to a single place and, well, read them as usual. If not, well, there's some manual labor usually to co by copying, ag pre-aggregating data somewhere, copying back. Um, framework helps with this, but you have to have framework there. Uh, actually, parallel, I believe, can help you with this if you use it cor correctly. But uh, it's uh, a little bit of pain, <laughs> so you, you, you have to dive into it. Okay. I 
Um, so uh, this is uh, I'm a game developer, so I don't know that much about this sort of thing. But uh, uh, so we have a lot of telemetry that we capture during game sessions, and we try to analyze that after um, after beta tests and such. So uh, I just checked. So for the last beta test we have, we have about uh, one hundred thousand, no, one hundred million lines of like. Uh, data and what we do now is we just feed it into our SQL database and then yeah. So what would you say is the like better than some of that If you are good SQL, uh, if you have uh, analytics who know SQL, who can extract the data from there, uh, and and if your data feeds to SQL, it's a good solution. But, well, if your data don't, doesn't fit, then you have to massage it, and then this approach comes into play. Okay. So, in this case, the SQL is the same as, uh, basically, the R of Excel, that's uh, next stage two. Okay, yeah, because we've, uh, we've had to, like, cut back on the number of stuff we log, because it does, like, uh, query to, to figure out something to take, like, days for us. Sure. Sure. You you ha also you have to be able to cook SQL so it works fast and as hard up is 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 hard up is sometimes expensive thing to do. And this thing can be done by any same programmer. Okay. Next question. Uh. Sorry, uh, the term GC file that you're processing, is it like a different machine or is it the same GC file? I, I'm so sorry, which? Uh, everything is on the same machine ideally, but uh, well, even, even, even if it, it is not, you can mount this on the SSH FS and it doesn't matter the speed of this file. Okay, so you actually are copying the channels of files that you're processing different nodes, so this node is processing and getting back. That is the easiest way to do this. You have our sync, you know, you have the parallel itself to handle the parallel works, maybe the DSH. Do you have any metrics or person with any kind of system? I'm sorry? Do you have any numbers on time of processing? One gigabyte file. Oh, well, well, one gigabyte file is very small. Hey, it, it, <laughs> it, it fits into memory. memory. Yeah, so, uh, well, no, I, I'm afraid I cannot uh, share any, any numbers here because I don't remember them. Uh, That's my part and me too. You have to be able to cook Hadoop, but that's a problem. You, you have to have a team that understands it. No, we. I see. No, no, we didn't because well, logic just works, uh, and that that's uh, the normal law of five one code. So, well, it it will work with straight law, and I think that it plain law will work well too. It will be a bit slower, but how much slower for you it is if it is critical depends on your use case. Sure, sure. But, well, that depends on the data and, and, and what you do. I ran some numbers on um, 5.2 and 5.3, some uh, string-based comparison work, and um, in 
I don't have them with me, but I found that um, 530 used slightly more, and then 531 took it back down to the 52 levels. I haven't tested the 51, um, but I so pretty much I didn't find any significant differences while I was testing between, between those versions. I can dig out some numbers um, when I get home. I just don't have them on here if you're interested. But. Okay, more questions? No, no more questions, okay? Thank you.